How do you know you're in the wrong private investigator association? Hi, I'm Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com. I'm actually a big proponent of belonging to a private investigator association for a lot of reasons. But before you get involved with one, there are some things to consider. Of course, you're going to check out their website. But if you can also maybe attend a meeting or two, talk with some people there, maybe some people higher up in the organization or talk with some members of the organization, that particular association, see if you might be a good fit. I have never found in my life a single blanket criteria that tells me that this person or that person is okay. You can't do it with anything. When I was in boot camp, I thought I can't wait to get out of boot camp so I'll only be around the people who, who are worthwhile in the military. And if you spend any time in the military at all, you should know plenty of non-useful people make it through boot camp and, and into military service. Uh, I, you know, you can't see it with police officers. I, I've known so many and great ones. But just because a man or a woman has a badge, just because they're a, law, a com com commissioned law enforcement officer, doesn't mean that they know what they're doing. The same with private investigators for crying out loud. We're not all the same by any stretch of imagination. So when you're evaluating a private investigator association, here's some things to think about. One, are the members knowledgeable? So you go to the meetings and, you know, I recognize a lot of this is done online now or it's in the state capital and you can't get there or whatever it might be for meetings. But there is a lot of value with, for meeting face to face. But spending some time talking to individuals in the organization. Here's my overall experience. It costs money to join the associations. So you're not finding a lot of slugs or unknowledgeable people joining, right? When I first uh, got into the business it, and say, you know, I think it was like 120 bucks a year to join my state association, which was candidly an insurmountable amount of money for me at the time as i got my business rolling and had money coming in there was always something better or something else to spend that 120 bucks on rather than membership into the state association i finally did join very glad that i did uh i was very uh, attended the meetings very active so you know i think there's a lot when you're dealing with people in an association, they've put their money where their mouth is, they're paying dues. And so you're going to find generally a more knowledgeable person, but don't take it for granted. Meet people, talk to people and see if they are knowledgeable and helpful for you. Number two, let's look at the purpose of the association. Is it misaligned with what you want to do? Now, the official purpose for every private investigator association, they all are similar in a sense to raise the the standards of the industry to improve the ethics, to benefit the members and help them grow, uh, to protect the the clients and the citizens out there that hire private investigators. Yes, you read the mission statements; they all read similar in that way. But the fact of the matter is, that you start attending meetings, and you're going to find out pretty quickly what is the association's real agenda or how seriously do they take those other elements. If what you're seeing in, in the world with them, when, when it gets down to meeting the people, knowing the people, attending the meetings, if that's misaligned with what you want or what you believe in, that may not be the right association for you. Number three, a lack of passion. How active is the association? What are they actually doing? It's a human organization. They all are. So you're going to find this same 80-20 rule everywhere. 20% of the people are really kind of keeping the whole thing running while 80% are just kind of riding the coattails. That doesn't surprise me. That's not a deal breaker for me. But look at the 20% and or, or hopefully the larger portion of that who are being active in the group and maybe they're doing toy drives at Christmas. Maybe they're doing educational things, arranging conferences, organizing things, uh, helping with you know, maintaining certifications for the association. If you see people who have a passion that you like, then that's something that tells you maybe that's where you should be. If you find that it's a dead organization that doesn't really do anything, maybe that's not the association that you want to be in. 
There are so many considerations. Let me just kind of wrap up with number four here. There are other things to think about, but number four would be the value you get out of that private investigator association. And the big, huge value is networking. You know, once you're a member, once you're in, once people know you and can trust you, it opens up more work for you. Some organizations have uh, certifications, which can be very, very worthwhile, even if they cost extra above and beyond the membership. If these certifications put you into the networking so that people will refer cases to you and so that honestly, you know, worthwhile people to refer cases to that either you don't want to have, it's not in your field of expertise, maybe the geography is wrong for you, the timing is wrong. But you can say, okay, I know this organization, I know this certification, these are trustworthy people, and you can farm out work that you don't want or can't do, and you can accept work from them. You know, so the networking, the value of the association, if you see that, that might be right for you. But if you're not seeing the opportunity to grow either in your education or in your business, then it might not be the right private investigation association for you. The mere fact that you're watching this tells me that you're someone who takes this type of thing seriously. I have a free report over at shadowanyone.com that you in particular might be interested in because you're, you care about things this much. It's titled, If You Want to Be a Private Investigator, Give Up. It does have an audio associated with it. I don't normally share this or tell people. It's kind of one of those surprises for people who get the report. There is that report about what you must do. But then there's also an audio file there for you to listen to. And it's it includes the single most important thing you need to know before you go into an interview. And I mean, when you're interviewing a witness or you're talking to somebody, uh, what do you need to know before you go in the single most important thing? That audio report is included when you get the uh, written report as well. So please check that out over at shadowanyone.com. Finally, wrapping this up, I'm very excited to share this final piece of advice with you because if you made it this far, you're the type of person who takes this to heart. It's what I share with you every week. I really live by it myself and hope that you do too. This is Larry Kay with shadowanyone.com reminding you, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.